Now students, we will study a lesson in English from moments. The name of the chapter is The Lost Child written by Mulkraj Anand. Mulkraj Anand is an Indian writer born on 12th December 1905, Peshawar, India, now in Pakistan. In this story, a child goes to a fair with his parents. He is happy and excited and wants the sweets and toys displayed there. But his parents don't buy them for him. Why then does he refuse when someone else offers them to him? Let us understand from this lesson. It was the festival of spring. From the wintry shades of narrow lanes and alleys emerged a gaily clad humanity. Some walked, some rode on horses. Others sat being carried in bamboo and bullock carts. One little boy ran between his father's legs, brimming over with life and laughter. The boy lagged behind, fascinated by the toys in the shop that lined the way. As his parents called, he hurried towards them, his feet obedient to their call, but his eyes still lingering on the receding toys. As he came to where they had stopped to wait for him, he could not suppress the desire of his heart, even though he well knew the old cold stare of refusal in their eyes. I want that toy, he pleaded. His father looked at him, red-eyed, in his familiar, tyrant's way. His mother, melted by the free spirit of the day, was tender and giving him her finger to hold and said, Look, child, what is before you? It was a flowering mustard field, pale like melting gold, as it swept across miles and miles of even land. A group of dragonflies were bustling about on their gaudy purple wings, intercepting the flight of a lone back bee or butterfly in search of sweetness from the flowers. The child followed them in the air with his gaze till one of them would still its wings and rest and he would try to catch it. But it would go fluttering, flapping up into the air. When he had almost caught it in his hands, his mother gave a cautionary call and asked him come to come on the footpath. He ran towards his parents gaily and walked abreast of them for a while, but soon left behind, attracted by the little insects and worms along the footpath that were teeming out from their hiding places to enjoy the sunshine. His parents again called the boy from the shade of a grove where they had seated themselves on the edge of a well. He ran towards them. A shower of young flowers fell upon the child as he entered the grove and forgetting his parents, he began to gather the raining petals in his hands. In the meanwhile, he heard the cooing of doves and ran towards his parents, shouting, The dove, the dove. The raining petals dropped from his forgotten hands. Come, child, come, they called to the child, who had now gone running in wild capers round the banyan tree, and gathering him up, they took the narrow winding footpath which led to the fair through the mustard fields. As they neared the village, the child could see many other footpaths full of throngs converging to the whirlpool of the fair. Now the child, at once repelled and fascinated by the confusion of the world he was entering, a sweet meat seller hawked. Gulab Jamun, Rasgulla, Barfi, Jalebi at the corner of the entrance and a crowd pressed round his counter at the foot of an architecture of many coloured sweets, decorated with leaves of silver and gold. The child stared open-eyed and his mouth watered for the barfi that was his favourite sweet. I want that barfi, he slowly murmured, but he knew half knew as he begged that his plea would not be heeded because his parents would say he was greedy. So without waiting for an answer, he moved on. A flower seller hawked, a garland of Gulmohor, a garland of Gulmohor. The child seemed irresistibly drawn. He went towards the basket where the flowers lay heaped and half murmured. I want that garland, but he well knew his parents would refuse to buy him those flowers because they, they would say that they were cheap. So without waiting for an answer, he moved on. Now the boy has seen a man stood holding a pole with yellow, red, green and purple balloons flying from it. The child was simply carried away by the rainbow glory of their silken colours and he was filled with an overwhelming desire to possess them all. But he well knew his parents would never buy him the balloons because they would say he was too old to play with such toys. So he walked on farther. Now on his way, 
A snake charmer stood playing a flute to a snake which coiled itself in a basket. It held raised in a graceful bend like the neck of a swan while the music stole into its invisible ears like the gentle rippling of an invisible waterfall. The child went towards the snake charmer but knowing his parents had forbidden him to hear such coarse music as the snake charmer played, he proceeded farther. There was a roundabout in full swing. Men and women, children carried away in a whirling motion, shrieked and cried with dizzy laughter. The child watched them intently. Now he stopped to ask his parents for the permission to enjoy the swing, but to his utter surprise, there was no reply. Neither his father nor his mother was there. Now the child realized that he was lost. He ran here and there, but with no fruitful result. The place was too overcrowded. He got terrified, but suddenly a kind-hearted man took him up in his arms and consoled the bitterly weeping child. He asked if he would like to have a joy ride, but the child sobbed. I want my father. I want my mother. The man offered him sweets, balloons and garland, but the child kept sobbing. I want my father. I want my mother.